Bucci, in part because of your platform at ESPN, and in part, I assume, because you're a huge fan, yeah. you're the face of hashtag college hockey. <laughs> Can you tell me what that's all about for the unindoctrined? Well, just, you know, it, most of these silly things uh, of mine just kind of happen in silly ways. I was just on Twitter. You know, when I first joined Twitter and you saw the hashtag, and I just, you know, Fritz from the movie Miracle, why do you play college hockey? Is it obvious for the girls? So college hockey is with a Boston accent from the movie Miracle, right. um, talking about our USA Olympic hockey team from 1980. So I just threw it on there, and it just kind of cut on, and people started to throw it back at me. And then the audience started making a T-shirt and a hat. It's part of the whole Bucci Overtime Challenge, which I give money to hockey charities. And it, yeah, so just it, I think it gave the sport kind of a mascot or a little bit of a brand, like you said, that didn't really have. And of course, ESPN, like you said, with the platform I have, I'm, um, I'm able to kind of get it out there. And so, yeah, it, it's kind of give the sport, like you said, like a little bit of a brand. On a personal level, though, what makes you love hockey, especially at the collegiate level? Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, my dad would fiddle with his stamp collection at night, and he would listen to Boston Bruin games on the radio, listen to Phil Esposito play. And when you listen to get, get sports on the radio, your imagination runs wild. And I just picture these guys fighting and blood, and it was almost like, you know, I, I, I picture, I kind of make the equation of a hockey, old school hockey reminded me of like being in church sometimes, these big cathedrals, the giant clocks, the blood, all kinds of things. And uh, offside, you're offside. <laughs> My fault, uh, let me yeah, get the skate back. Point. Let the puck go in the zone first. <laughs> My so, yeah, fault. I've, I've always loved the sport, and I think it began because the, listening to the game on radio and, and your imagination runs wild. All right, so the Frozen Four back in Tampa for the second time in yeah. four years. What's this experience like? And is it better than last time? Has it improved in some way? Well, I wasn't here last time. This is my fourth Frozen Four as play-by-play -play man for ESPN. Mm -hmm. I've had Pittsburgh, Philly, Boston, and here. Mm -hmm. I think they should come here every four years. It's just so beautiful, and, uh, and it just really re-energizes you in the weather. And I think it energizes the players and the coaches and the fans. They love it. And so I would come here every four years. And uh, I think it's a perfect venue from the arena to the hotels here. And so, um, yeah, I think it's great. Quinnipiac coach Rand Pecknell said you got to watch out for the girls, though. It's a major distraction. The girls are trouble for you here? The line is long and it moves quickly. <laughs> All right. I know you don't want to name a winner necessarily because yeah. you have a vested interest in calling the game right. fairly. But yeah. if you had to lend me a prediction for tomorrow night, what would it be? I think it's, it's going to be close. I really do. I think the key for North Dakota is to play loose. If they play tight like Denver, I think Quinnipiac will win. Um, if, Denver, if North Dakota can play loose and play their game and attack and attack and attack, they do have a little bit more talent that maybe that can be the difference and they can squeak out a one goal or two goal win.